Hi, welcome back to TU TV. I'm Parker. And I'm David. So Parker, despite this cold weather that we're having, what is your favorite breakfast cereal? Ooh, my favorite. I'll tell you my, my comfort food for cereal, my, my comfort cereal is Cinnamon Life. Ooh, interesting. Yes. I know Life cereal just in general is a really good one. But, yeah, very solid. You know, if I ever want to feel like I'm back at home in third grade stressing about a spelling test, Gotta go with Cinnamon Toast Crunch, you know? Yes, true. Yeah. That is kind of uh, life cereal on steroids a little bit. A little bit, you know, a little bit unhealthier. Yeah. But yeah. But little, tastier. Tastier, definitely, yeah. Yeah. I have to say, I also am, I am an advocate for Captain Crunch. Yes. You know, if you really want to feel like a young kid again, go with Captain Crunch. Yeah, my mom is still a fan of Captain Crunch. Um, so the only breakfast cereals we really have are like Life Cinnamon and then Captain Crunch, which is supposed <laughs> to be like my mom's stress food. Oh my so. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. My mom ended up going on a health kick for a while there back when I was still at home. And so we ended up going with stuff like Raisin Bran. Yeah. Not quite as good. Well, uh, make sure to pour a bowl of cereal to watch the rest of this episode. Hello, welcome to TUTV. I'm Christopher. And I'm Ethan. We've got some exciting stories this week, so let's jump right into it. The Florida Department of Transportation announced that a new bridge will be built in Cistrunk, Fort, Fort Lauderdale's oldest black community. The construction of this bridge caused controversy in the community of Cistrunk due to the government's initial plans of restructuring the community. Historically, minority neighborhoods across the country have been damaged by hundreds of highways being built through them during the middle of the 20th century. The mayor of Fort Lauderdale said in an interview that, quote, if you build a bridge, you are furthering the separation between communities and we don't want that, end quote. He then continued to say that we are trying to tear away those divisions and artificial barriers that have kept us apart for so many decades. Queen Elizabeth of Great Britain has tested positive for COVID-19 with flu-like symptoms. This information was released this past week by the Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace has shared in a press conference that, quote, close eye will be kept on her, end quote. The Prime Minister of Britain, Boris Johnson, sent out a tweet this past Friday stating, quote, I'm sure I speak for everyone in wishing Her Majesty the Queen a swift recovery from COVID and a rapid return to vibrant good health, end quote. Buckingham Palace has also reported that the Queen is fully vaccinated and boosted. Michigan police officials on patrol noticed a fire in the mosque at around 1 a.m. on February 12th. A 37-year-old man named Ahmed Taki was seen at the site of the fire and exchanged gunshots with the police. Taki was shot and died at the scene. As of now, police have stated that there are no clear motives behind the fire. Paisley Schultes, a six-year-old girl from Cayuga Heights, has been found after being considered missing for the past two years. Paisley was found in Sajertes, New York, and authorities believe that she was taken by her non-custodial parents and kept in a hollowed-out staircase. Officers found the young girl after an hour of searching the makeshift room under a staircase leading to the basement. Paramedics arrived at the scene and examined Paisley, finding that she was in good health. Paisley was safely sent back to her legal guardian this past weekend. The, re the results of the 2022 University of Tulsa Student Association are in. Justin Yang won his seat as the president of the Student Association. Isa Scott won his position for vice president. Campbell Rogerson won his position as treasurer. Sarah Tran won her position as secretary. Congratulations to all the winners from TUTV. So as a former political science major, I have some thoughts on the essay election. I oh, think elections are good. Mm -hmm. I think democracy is pretty good. That's a, that's a scathing hot take you've got there. I learned from the best. It's just 
democracy is good. What do you think? Uh, I do like a good democracy every now and then, uh, especially when voting for things like uh, officials. Yeah. Uh, we always want the best people to lead us, and who better to choose than the people themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we really got good democratic system going on, so go democracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, that's all we have for this week. Welcome back to another TU TV Senior Spotlight. Today we are talking with Aubrey Allen. Hello. <laughs> cool. So, um, Aubrey, could you talk a little bit about what you're studying? Uh, yeah, we'll start there. Yeah, uh, I am a music and film double major. My kind of like emphasis of study is audio engineering and music composition and post production in music. Awesome. Speaking of uh, music, are you in the orchestra by chance? I am in the orchestra per chance. Um, uh, I play viola in the orchestra, and you play cello in the orchestra. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's a fun time in the <laughs> orchestra. <It is. laughs> uh, speaking of audio engineer, um, what do you typically do uh, at TUTV? So I started at TUTV in 2018, uh, my freshman year, and since then, I've been like kind of doing a little bit of social media, and but mainly like for the past couple of years, I've been doing audio engineering, um, and uh, throughout the years, I've also run like teleprompter and graphics and camera, so a bit of a jack of all trades around here. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> Are there any uh, projects you're working on right now? I am. Uh, my senior project is a podcast. Uh, a narrative podcast that I'm currently working on. Um, it is tentatively called The Silent Symphony, um, and it is uh, currently in post-production for the pilot episode. Okay, awesome. So The Silent Symphony, that uh, I haven't, usually whenever I go to a symphony, I want it to be not silent. Um, so what, what's that all about? Yeah, so I don't want to give away too much <laughs> right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But um, I will say that it is a, um, a fantasy murder mystery. Okay. So it'll, it'll follow um, this like adventuring party, sort of like a d and type themed thing. Um, and then they're kind of like escapades through this giant city in a fantasy world and there ends up being a murder and oh, cool. they gotta solve the murder. <laughs> awesome. And so do you have it like all fully written out already? I have an outline of the full story. Okay. Um, only the first episode is fully scripted out. Um, but I have a very good idea of where the rest of the story is going to go. That's awesome. And you found like voice actors and stuff? Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Okay. There's about 20 characters in the first episode, which runs about 35 minutes long. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You found them all. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Cool. There are a couple people that do multiple roles, and I want to uh, applaud the voice actors that I did find um, uh, with their talents for that, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Cool. So what are you planning to do um, after college? So I currently don't have any plans uh, lined out right now, but mm. I'm looking at a couple of different internships with media companies around Tulsa. Um, and just continuing to work on the projects that I've been working on. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Kind of, kind of little free to do whatever finds me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, how long do you think? Uh, honestly, I'm just really curious about this. The <laughs> Silent Symphony. How long do you think the um, the episodes are going to be like spaced out? Um, I haven't decided if I want to start posting them. Um, like once I've finished each episode oh, or yeah. finish all of the episodes and then start posting them. So uh, I think the first episode will be made publicly by mid-May. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so what has been your favorite class at TU so far? Probably all of the film scoring classes that I've taken with Dr. Rivers. 
Um, he's just an amazing professor, super sweet. Um, I also took a music of the Lord of the Rings course with him, uh, and we just like studied in depth about uh, Howard Shore's score for the Lord of the Rings tril trilogy, and it, it was pretty great. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for talking to us, Aubrey. No problem. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. TV. I'm Catherine. And I'm Jonathan Rice. Let's hop into today's stories. Tulsa men's basketball beat USF 65-57 last Saturday. In the two teams' previous matchup, Tulsa won at home 76-45. TU started slow with only one field goal in the first 11 minutes, but took a 25-22 lead with 2 minutes 21 left in the first half. Tulsa held the lead the rest of the game. TU finished the game with 52% field goal shooting and shot 44% from three. Tulsa's Sam Griffin finished with a game-high 23 points. The win gives Tulsa their second win in three games as they move out of last place in the conference standings. Tulsa women's basketball lost to SMU 42-72 last Saturday. Tulsa came into the game with a 14-7 record on the season. Despite TU taking an early 8-0 lead, SMU went on a 10-3 run before finishing the first quarter with a 14-12 lead. SMU outscored Tulsa 23-5 in the second quarter to hold a 37-17 lead at the half. SMU would hold a lead as big as 42 points in the second half before going on to win by 30. The loss marks Tulsa's third straight loss as they head into the last three games of the season. Tulsa men's tennis beat Arkansas 4-3 at home this past sat Sunday. Coming into the duel, both teams received votes in the most recent coaches' poll. Arkansas won the doubles point to take the 1-0 lead. Tulsa pulled ahead 3-1 with wins at 3rd, 4th and 6th single spots. Arkansas then tied the duel with wins at number 5 and number 2 spot. The clinching point came when Tulsa's Co Cody Pearson won at number 1 singles. With his win, Pearson improved to 5-2 in duels at the top single spot. The win marks TU's second straight win against an SEC team. Tulsa's women's tennis lost a 22nd ranked Oklahoma State 0-4 last Sunday. Tulsa came into the duel against the in-state rival with a 7-1 record. TU won the opening doubles match, but OSU won the next two doubles matches to win the doubles point. Oklahoma State won at numbers 2, 3, and 6 singles spots for the quick 4-0 sweep. With their doubles win, the pair of Lily Hutchins and Anna Narajo Martinez improved to 12 to four on the season at the number three spot. Tulsa returns back to conference play next Sunday at home against Memphis. Tulsa women's golf finished sixth at the Columbia Classic last Monday. TU came into the duel coming off a second place finish in their season, op season opener at Texas State Invitational. Virginia Tech won the tournament with a three round score of 880. Tulsa finished with a score of 903 after hitting 309 in the final round. TU's Lily Thomas finished tied at sixth place, finishing five strokes behind the leader. The sixth place finish marks Thomas's second top 10 finish. Tulsa will compete next at Trinity Forest Invitational March 7th and 8th. So have you been watching much of the basketball? Oh yes, no, definitely the uh, women's basketball specifically. Mm. I've been, you know, keeping a close eye on them definitely. You know, I just love how they leave their hearts on the courts. Yes. Um, you know, we've done well nationally this year too. And we're just kind of going through a rough patch right now, but you know, yeah. I think we have time to make up for it. Oh, that. definitely. They had a really yeah. great start to the season, that's for sure. And I'm really excited to see what they can do. Um, I love to watch all the women's sports, especially because I'm a student athlete too. So definitely. it's really nice for me to do. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay warm. We'll see you next time. Hi, welcome back. I'm Christopher. And I'm Catherine. We've got some great stories for you this week, so stay tuned. The Marvelous Miss Maisel dropped the first episodes of its fourth season on Friday. The Emmy award-winning show returns to screens after a three-year hiatus. In a departure from the previous release schedules, the season four premiere consisted of just two episodes. Prime Video will continue to release two new episodes of the show every Friday until March 11th. 
Alongside the season four premiere, Prime Video announced that Marvelous Miss Maisel will conclude with the fifth and final season that has already been uh, begun filming in New York. Beloved Tulsa restaurant Burn Co. Barbecue has closed its doors after a fire started in the building late Wednesday evening. Firefighters arrived on the scene around 10.30pm and were finally able to extinguish the fire around 1am Thursday morning. The building sustained significant damages, including the collapse of its roof. Burnco's neighbour, Farm Bar, also suffered smoke and water damage. On Sunday afternoon, the Mercury Lounge hosted a benefit concert which raised over $10,000 to rebuild Burnco and repair Farm Bar. Founded in 2013, Burnco quickly became a staple in the Tulsa food scene and has since gained national recognition for its unique, unique take on barbecue. There is not yet a timeline for, timeline for Burnco's reopening. Justin Bieber's Justin Wor Justice World Tour has temporarily paused. On Saturday, Bieber's team announced that his upcoming Las Vegas performance would be rescheduled for June 28th after the senior contracted COVID-19. In a tweet published by Bieber-affiliated account on Sunday evening, his February 22nd Glendale performance will also be postponed until late June. Bieber is currently scheduled to perform at the BOK Center on March 18th, along with the opening acts Jaden Smith, Eddie Benjamin, and Teo. The North American Leg of Justice World Tour began on February 18th in San Diego and will conclude with the rescheduled Glensdale concert on June 30th. Today marks the end of London Fashion Week. London's 2022 Fall Winter Fashion Week began on February 18th and boasted runway shows from some of the biggest names in fashion. Noted designers who premiered collections over the weekend include Halpern, Molly Goddard and Harris Reed. Notable moments across runways range from dark quilted pieces from Simone Russia to sportswear inspired dresses from David Comer. The next big week in fashion starts where London left off as Milan Fashion Week begins today and run through, runs through to February 28th. The Oscars are adding a public voted category to this year's ceremony. After years of controversy surrounding the Oscars' reluctance to recognize blockbuster films, the Motion Picture Academy has announced that it will award a fan favorite film during the ceremony. The winner will be determined by submissions via the Academy's website and votes cast over Twitter using hashtag OscarsFanFavorite. This edition comes on the heels of a failed attempt to add an outstanding achievement in popular film field to the Oscars in 2018. Audiences will be able to vote for their favorite films 20 times per day until March 3rd. The Oscars will air on March 27th on ABC. So, uh, so who are you going to vote for for the Oscars oh, uh, fan favorite? I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely clued up on who mm -hmm. is nominated, but I mean, everyone is worthy of a win. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is Spider-Man nominated? I heard it might not be, and I'm not happy about that if that's the case. Um, it might be nominated. I think it would be nominated for like next year's Oscar awards, but I'm not sure. Oh yes, that would make uh, sense. Regardless, it's gonna w it would win like hands down. I mean, mm. you got all the stars in there. Everyone's exactly. nostalgic. Um, I am a little worried though. Twenty votes per day is a lot. Yes, yeah, you could have some people going crazy with that for sure. Mm -hmm. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time. So, uh, David, are you a big Oscars fan? Um, honestly, I haven't ever tuned into the Oscars to watch live, but it's always fun reading up on what movies, you know, won big at the Oscars a day or two after it happened. What yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, most of the time, if something is Oscar nominated, then I'm more likely to watch it. Mm -hmm. But I admittedly don't take the actual winners of any awards super seriously. Okay. Uh, just because I know a lot of it's, you know, lobbying and all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when s stuff gets Oscar nominated, I think that's definitely opens my eyes a bit. So. Yeah, it definitely encourages me to like take a second look at a movie. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I already watched it and said like, eh, maybe it wasn't my favorite. You know, maybe there's something there that I didn't see and maybe it's worth a second watch. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very sad to hear that the queen contracted COVID, I have to say. That is sad. I hope she pulls through. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's... That's the thing, you know, uh, perhaps this is, uh, yeah, overemphasizing a, a point that's been made a lot, but uh, COVID does suck. COVID really does suck. Yeah. I saw a meme, uh, I think yesterday, that said the queen was holding on to dear life just because she didn't want to be reincarnated as Trisha Paytas' uh, baby, mm. uh, because apparently she's pregnant now. Uh, uh, but yeah, that was yeah. a pretty funny meme, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that would be unfortunate, yeah. That would be really unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. But yeah, 
I don't yeah. know. COVID, bad. Yeah. COVID so. is bad. Oscar is mediocre. Um, cereal, great. Cereal is fantastic. Speaking of cereal, you can probably get cereal through the University of Tulsa's new deal with Grubhub. Yes. You can actually use your Hurricane Gold dollars through that. And I believe there's a delivery discount as well. There is. In fact, delivery is free with Grubhub Plus. So uh, stay tuned. Um, and we'll, we'll see you next week. And mm -hmm. remember, next time, we're not going to tell you to pour a bowl of cereal. You better have it ready. Exactly. We'll be expecting it. Mm -hmm. See you all next time.